<laughs> so can you tell us what you've got there? A violin. What do they do? They make a noise. It'll make some music. We went up and watched the Northern Symphonia. They explained what the instruments were. It gave everybody a chance to find out more information about each instrument as well. Um, and then the kids had a look at all the instruments and had a go and sort of give them an idea of what they might be able to play and what they wanted to play. Hook your fingers around the bow and then use all the weight of your arm and then put it that way. Yeah. Brilliant. Very good. Can you try some of the middle strings as well? Use your fingers again on the bow and then lean your arm onto the bow. Yay! Can you feel that? Brilliant, well done. Let's see if without my help now. Really Can you remember which instruments you tried? Wait to get it going, doesn't it? Cello. You want to try some of the higher strings? Violin. Oh, she tried the violin, the cello, the viola, the trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried the trombone. He didn't even take a step to try the trumpet. Uh, we're into the second year of the In Harmony project and we can clearly see the advantages of what's been happening. Um, I've been here since the very beginning and can see how it's affecting both the children and the parents, uh, particularly noticeable with some of our parents who... Um, have really taken on board that it's something quite unique but have been very supportive of um, their own children as well as what's happening within school. How fast can you go? You're a virtuoso. The kids were very hyper, constantly. Can I, can I practice, can I practice? Um, and they just constantly talked about the new things that were going on at school. Um, it was just great to watch. Yeah! It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, do you want to get your zippy zippy zips? See what's inside? Felicity, have you managed to undo the seatbelt? You've got the blanket off. Have you undone the seatbelt? Good girl. Shall we? Everybody stand up and show me rest position. When I was in year one, I started to get really nervous and now I don't. It's the hope on strings rock. It's the hope on strings rock. Ready to pluck. Pluck your strings. I like it when you pluck the strings. And how do you pluck the strings? Can you show me? Like this. And is, what do they call that? Pity call. That's a long word, isn't it? So are you learning new words and everything as well? Yeah. Yeah? They got them during assembly. So as they, the instruments were being delivered to the school, Judy then gave them to the kids uh, in assembly. So that was quite exciting for them and us really to see the excitement on their faces when they received them. <laughs> when I first heard about it I didn't have a clue about it really and then we had a conversation with the teachers and stuff like that and they explained more about it all and what was going to be happening and it just sounded absolutely the best thing for the school really and it was really like impressive what was going to happen and we just looked forward to taking part in it. At first it was the violin and then she really settled on the oboe and that's what she stuck at and she was adamant and that was the one that she wanted. When the name was read out in the assembly to receive it there was just a big massive smile on her face and she practices all the time, she absolutely loves it. She really enjoys playing the oboe. Take 
who we take with instruments home. We've got a little booklet so we can yeah. learn the skills like F major and stuff like that. And we're, we've got a pack of books like, and we and we learn them. So yeah. like when like we get older, we like, remember them. New pieces, but like we're not all the same with pieces. So like I'll be on the F major scale. She might be on G major scale. Yeah, so, so different and she can play, I play banana tango, and she play the other one. Mona in Moscow. Yeah, so that's what we do. I think Hawthorne um, and Laurie, the parents are unemployed. So um, some of the, the kids haven't got, they haven't got loads of things that privileged kids would have. Like what Abby, she does get what she wants, if I can afford it. Some kids can't because their parents haven't got that money. I mean, a no board itself, a good one, is around about £300. There's no way I could afford to do that. Then music lessons on top of that, and then going to the stage on a Sunday, there's no way in this world I would have been able to afford to do that. So this coming into the school with like the instruments and everything like that is giving a child that hasn't got much something to strive for. They can take the instrument home. I mean, it's, it's theirs. And that's the best thing about it. When I first brought it home, it was really good because I got the opportunity of playing to my mum and my sister. And therefore, I was really good. I just love it. I'm glad I chose it. Like, I'm glad I got the opportunity of playing it. We sit and listen to her upstairs. And even Aaron, he sits in the passage when he's on the computer and she'll be on. And you see how you, how you heard her? And she's getting really, really good. Sometimes when I'm done, I show my mum my piece. Same with me. Like, I, when I'm finished, like, a little pe piece, like, I go down and ask my mum if I could show her to her, and she goes, yes. The project's been going now for about a year and a half, and listening to Hannah and seeing Hannah progress in the school, it's really brought the school together. It's made the school a better place. The last two years have been the best possible years that Hawthorne could ever have had. Um, the children have got experiences that they would never have been able to imagine. I mean, we had the, the Venezuelan Youth Choir came and sang with them. Um, we've had the Royal Northern Symphonia playing with them, not just not playing to them as an audience, but standing beside them and playing with them. Okay, so if you do need to breathe, where do you need to breathe, tongue? Yes. And the, the continuous excitement of new ways of doing their music, of making sure that they they get better and better and better. And seeing, I, I watched the other day um, a group of the year ones, and at the door where they were playing outside were the reception children who don't have an instrument yet and they were all hanging on every note because they know in a few weeks time they get when they come into year one they get their instrument when the first started it was just single notes um, and it just sounded like noise to be honest but now um, sometimes Felicity will be stood in the corner practicing and Leon will come in and say well that was a bit off and you know it'll remind her well you did that bit wrong and it's just the interaction between them and them both knowing when it's right and when it's wrong um, and now you can actually make out what they're playing as well so it's great to hear but I think there's a historic issue around some of the families that we have in our community that they're not able to do things. So it's changing that just to that word to be, I can do it, I can access these things, my child can do that. <laughs> an absolute whirlwind. It seems like yesterday since we started in December. Um, 
the children are just blowing everybody away. They're just totally enjoying the project. And they've always been enthusiastic, but something like the concert, this concert especially, they've just been so... All of them were coming up to me afterwards and say, have we got ensemble tomorrow? Sadly, no. Oh. It's been a, an emotional roller coaster, shall we say. It's, it's, it's had one a huge journey. Um, we get along very well with the staff from the Sage. We've learned from each other um, because their expectations were different at the very beginning from ours. Um, we've had to adapt and be flexible. Um, it's been very emotional seeing the children at the very beginning um, when they were really just learning and the progress that the teacher, the, the tutors thought they were making to what we thought should be happening. But then very quickly things have moved on um, and I don't think there's been particularly a dry eye in the house when the kids have been performing because the change is so massive. <laughs> I think that because the children are more confident and more competent, they, the way they are around school is much more organised, much more calm, much more, it's just this is part of their work, this is what they do. So there's none of the... It's, it's, there is lots of excitement, but there's not... There's not the kind of excitement of something new. There's the excitement of, actually, I'm getting better at this. And I think that's what we've seen is children that I didn't think would stick in with this are actually improving and getting so much better uh, at what they do. I mean, I watched the orchestra the other day and they are reading really complicated pieces of music now. They've just taken it on board. It, it, it's part of their language. That's the other thing I've noticed. Their language has changed, the way they talk about music. We had um, Lars Vogt in the other day, who's the new musical director for the Royal Northern Symphonia. And the children were asking musical questions because it's just become part of their vocabulary. And so that's what I mean by it being it, the norm. So the children have changed, when I look back on it, have changed considerably. really brought them all together, gets them to do different things and it's really good for the school and even for the students and stuff like that because Hannah, she loves going places, she loves going to the Sage, she's done concerts and stuff like that, she's on the race course, she's done lots of different things. I think we've been able to see from the events that the SAGE have run, we've encouraged parents to go and obviously they've got the opportunity to take up some of the events as free tickets and things for families. You're on bus one, let's go down to the third bus down. It's been really interesting to see the families who have, have then chose to go. I think being able to access the SAGE to give them a taster of what's available, um, and, you know, you've then shown them things that they may be interested in. But for a lot of our families, the cost of getting there, the cost of taking a number of children for anything in the area can be a real issue. Leah, you, Leah, I think the, the Sage building has actually started to mean something to our um, parents because they're just so much more confident about going there. Um, they do. They, they always turn up if, if they're, we're doing anything with the children. And my example of that is we've got a concert in July, which is a joint concert with all the other schools in the area. And uh, we've obviously invited all the parents. 
Now, if I tell you that some of the other schools have got about 20 parents going or some have got as few as five and we've got 192 parents going, that to me tells me, A, they appreciate how important it is and B, they're perfectly comfortable with going, which this certainly wouldn't have been before. I would never, ever have thought about going to the Sage Mine. I thought, you know, big um, orchestras and classical music, you know, it, well, it'll be posh people and people with means and things like that. Um, so I thought it would never um, be for me, or I would be able to afford to go there. Takes this way, performers this way, performers that way, you're that way. But because Abby's part of the Sage now, I mean, that was your first your first little concert there, wasn't it? And because they were on the, the, the stage there, do you know what I mean? And wait, the, the amount of people that turned up from the school was unbelievable. There was absolutely loads of were there. Find your instrument and don't get it out, just stay next to it. I didn't know what the sage was or what it was about until they started introducing it to the school. But once the school had started getting into all the bits and pieces about the musical instruments and the kids quite often say to us, can we go down the stage and see what they're doing? And so we're learning quite a bit as well as the kids are, to be honest. I was quite amazed actually at how big and open everything was, especially the rooms when you went in to the halls. I thought we they didn't look this big from the outside. <laughs> so I was quite quite surprised at uh, that. I was a bit nervous to see what they were, they were all going to be doing, um, but it, it was fab, absolutely amazing. Um, especially in the short time they'd had to put the stuff together as well. It was absolutely amazing. And why was it, why were you nervous? Because there was loads of people in it and I just looked around and it was really nervous. Hello everybody, can you all hear me? Being asked to speak right into the microphone so just wave if you can't hear me at any point. I really feel like a real personal um, connection with all of them. I, I feel like I've got to know each and every one and even their families have been really welcoming and, and I've just got to know the whole community. every Sunday because like not everyone goes like just some people like, like so Rebecca picks in uh -huh. John picks. so we uh, get to like we go every Sunday for six hours uh, play and stuff like that <laughs> The 
just say it. The I just said goals. like, um, you put you're really good, so like you can go to the stage because you're really best at the oboes, or you can go. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what time it? And what does that make you feel? How did that make? It you makes us feel, feel really jolly. Yeah, jolly good. Yeah, because like, mm -hmm. we're being chosen. And it's like very good. Now there are no that it can be like that. I will go every time there's a concert on with them. So I will support the kids. It doesn't matter if she she turns 15, 16, 17. If there's a concert where the kids and and it's still happening for Hawthorne, I will still I will definitely still go, because it's brilliant. Just, I mean, it puts a lump in your throat to know that your your Ben's doing this sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? But I would never ever have thought about going to the stage if it hadn't been for Abby. So she's brought a little bit culture into my life as well so it may just seem like a very small chunk of change in an area like ours but it is quite significant to think that they could be they could open doors for other things not just around the music but if they can do this they can do other things in life I think it's important for them because they're, they're doing something that they want to do but it also means that they've got some sort of structure other than just sitting around outside and getting themselves into bother and stuff like that. It's just great to see they've got something to put their time and effort into. It makes us feel that like I wanted to do it over yeah, and over again. Over again, so. again because like, we um, love our instrument and so we just want to keep it forever. <laughs> if this project stopped after three years, it would be morally wrong because you cannot do this to a community, to a school, and then take it away. Because it, it would be cruel, it would be such a blow to everybody. Um, so we are assuming that that's not going to happen, because it's the only way forward is to be completely positive about it. We're hoping that they'll certainly be the next few years funded in the same way as before. We're looking for philanthropic support. We believe that this is so important and it would be completely and utterly wrong. So we're writing a 20 to 30 year plan and that's what we're looking for.